Welcome to another exciting edition of Cambridge Inside Out. My name is Robert Winters. And I'm Judy Nathans. Welcome back. We, we, uh, took we, a week off. We, we, we took a week. We were, we were vacationing in Bermuda <laughs> last week. No, right, yeah, right. not really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. So what's, uh, what's up on the uh, agenda here for tonight? Mm -hmm. uh, there is, uh, so this is December 1st. For those of you who are watching this on YouTube three years from now. Uh, <laughs> oh, right, yeah. And uh, let's see, I guess this is the last month of the last of the closing city council term. Oh, oh it, right, because it's right. December. It's just right. winding down mm -hmm. in 2015, that's for the year, right? Uh, and we'll have a mayoral election come beginning of January, right? Okay. But there are some things that are uh, interesting that are happening around town um, right now. Uh, one thing I thought maybe just sort of touch upon right here, just. Um, is um, right. there's a, a, an event, there's going to be a kickoff event this Saturday. Um, it's actually on uh, participatory budgeting. And for those who don't know, participatory budgeting uh, is a, uh, an idea that was brought to the city council by Leland Chung and others uh, several years ago. It was implemented last year. Uh, and it's where citizens, and apparently not just citizens, but other people in, even in city government, sort of bring, in, uh, bring forth some proposals and they are vetted appropriately, whittled down to, how many did we end up with this time? Uh, 26, I'm trying to get to that page, yeah, so, but I so can't. So 20 write. some odd uh, proposals. Uh, and uh, then there'll be, people will, will come in and vote. So you can either come in to vote, and we'll give you a list of some of the locations in a moment. Uh, once that gets started, there'll also be an opportunity to vote online through uh, the participatory web page for the city of Cambridge. Right. Uh, last year, the, the total uh, amount of money involved in these participatory budget projects last year was set at a cap at five hundred thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Uh, they actually ended up spending uh, approving more because it was uh, you know an additional project that they could fit in. Maybe for the, I forget was another thirty or sixty thousand dollars worth. So it was about six fifty altogether. I don't think it went that high. That high right? It was five something, uh, but they uh, felt it was a success, uh, and uh, the finance department said we're going to do it again, uh, and proposals were introduced, vetted, and now there's down to twenty some odd projects that will be voted on by mm -hmm. ordinary people like you and me. I think. The, the youngest you can vote is, I think, age, you got to be, okay. be 12 years old and vote even. Right? I was trying to find it on your page. I had it in an, an email you sent, but I can't find it on your page. You it wasn't to, under Cambridge if Inside you go, Out. If you go to the Inside Out, we I can, did we go can, there. We can navigate to it from there. All right. Yes, yeah, so if you go there you under get... materials. Oh, I didn't even there. see that. There I don't. I didn't yeah. see the date. There we yeah, go. So, so now we there. will go to. Yeah. So uh, here we go, right here. So we can actually go to the page, and as yeah. we do it, let's see. So we are. So right can in I here. scroll once it's on there? No, it's that. right here. Oh, so we gotta yeah. choose the computer and then do that. Oops. No. I, there we go. Now we have <laughs> now it. Now I, you go. All right, here we go. There we go. Yay! All right. So okay. as we as we glance at this fine piece of work yes. from the webmasters of the city of Cambridge, uh, it says here, you know, get ready ready to vote December fifth through twelfth. Right. Uh, and there's a you listing can start of start online on the fifth and then go to places, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, actually, on this Saturday, December fifth, right. from noon to four p.m., mm -hmm. there's a participatory budget vote kickoff at the Cambridge Side wow. Gallery near the food court. Oh, good place to have it. Yeah, I might even go to that. <laughs> <laughs> at what time was that? Uh, that's from noon to four p.m. Okay, great. Uh, so you'll be able to vote there. There'll be people with little computers and. I think oh, all of the votes great. get recorded on little workstations and whatnot. And that's probably an old term. This, but here are some of the uh, here are the projects. Here are the starting the projects. You yes. want to quickly comment on any of them? Yes, yeah, some of I think so, I, these are I think some of the by, projects uh, categories, yeah. are kind of repeats that that uh -huh. made it through the uh, the vetting process last year, and which apparently have been reintroduced. I believe the Peace Garden. Yes, you're was right. In last year's. Uh, I think uh, you're menu. right. Menu, mm -hmm. and I think maybe the little free libraries as well, because I think I voted for yeah. that. Yeah, uh, and a maybe year they ago. want more. You know, so. Right. Um, but there's some um, some good ideas in here. The block party trailer I was intrigued by. I'm not sure I agree with that one. It's <laughs> a lot of money to have a block party yeah. trailer just dedicated to block parties. I don't know. One of the things that's problematic of this is yeah. that if you have about six hundred thousand dollars total. Uh, some yeah. of these projects, like the Expensive. Cambridge Garden of Peace, is $350,000. Right. It's already more than half the total right. budget. 
Uh, but there are some that are more like 40,000 and 50,000. Let's go to one of your favorite 70, topics here. A lot on bicycles here. Street sidewalks and transit. Street sidewalks and transit. Yeah, this is the one where you said you commented on. Oh, the, yes, right. The separated yes. bike lanes from right. traffic. Right. Yeah, my, my, perhaps my prejudice is, will show a little bit. It's number yeah. nine in the list. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, but it, let me just sort of rattle through some of the dates here. Mm -hmm. uh, so in addition to Saturday, noon to four at the Cambridge Side Galleria, there's also Sunday, December 6th from 2 to 4.30 at the main library. Wednesday, December 9th, 3 to 6 at the O'Neill Branch Library on Ringe Ave. And Thursday, December 10th from mm -hmm. 4 to 6 at the Collins Branch, Collins Branch Library on Aberdeen Ave. Yeah, and if you go to the website uh, that this is on, or or your website, you it's all listed there too. Yeah, I think I do need to do a little bit more promotion of this, but that's yeah. uh, that'll be for when I get home later all tonight, right? right? <laughs> so do you want to just do uh, that? Maybe we could just sort of pop on. So the by, all right, so then. Yeah, number nine was the one, the only yeah. one I had commented on. I'm not, right. I, I think many people who know me know I'm not yeah. a big fan of separated uh, yeah. bike lanes. Right. Uh, except along places like uh, where there's a lot of friction and differential in speed, like Memorial right. Drive, obviously. Right. Actually, right. the DCR is planning to put some separated um, bicycle infrastructure along the Jamaica Way, which I think mm -hmm. is a fabulous idea. So believe me, I, when it's appropriate, yeah. I like these facilities. Yeah. Um, but um, doing what they've done, uh, let's see, I think in number nine, I think, is that a clickable? I think it is. Oh. Yeah. If you could click oh, on that here. Oh, I see that. Um, oh, okay. All right. So, so I don't know from whom this idea comes, but there's at least one street on Ames Street where what they've done is they've moved car parking for away from the curb oh, out yeah, here's into a photo of it. Yeah, what's right ultimately there. the middle of the street, and then they sort of require um, bikers to ride in what I always rather demeaningly refer to as cattle runs. Yeah, um, and they between, don't do it though. A lot of them. Won't and they do don't it. do it. I mean, I yeah. prefer to be out in the roadway myself. Yeah. I like adequate wet lane width uh, so that both mm -hmm. motor vehicles and cyclists can be accommodated. So I've never been a big fan of this type of treatment mm -hmm. on streets. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a bit of an annoyance when I first saw this a few days ago because they actually had a photo that they were using to yeah. promote this. This which photo was, right here. No, it's oh. actually they've now taken it down because oh. it was a photo that was taken by me. Oh. To promote. Uh, a project that I did not approve of. Oh, that's interesting. And so when I complained, they did remove that photo. Good to be vigilant. All right. All right. Um, so you want to go back to? Yeah, something? let's go back. Uh, yeah, I think now there's a, on the other hand there's another one which just says May, it's number ten. May, I like that one. Massachusetts what do you think? Avenue. Which one? Yeah. Yeah, number ten. That yeah, I, I like that. Make Massachusetts Avenue safer sense. for bikers. Just put if more you, signage. If you, yeah. I did recently ride on mm -hmm. my bike out along Mass Ave, going up toward Porter Square, mm -hmm. uh, and I actually found it to be a little bit of a free for all. Partly because the lane markings were inadequate, mm -hmm. and uh, as a cyclist who prefers to ride in the roadway, I didn't really feel because people turn that into a bit of a raceway. Mm -hmm. I felt uh, it was not really as safe as it could be. So yeah. I think they do need to put some lane markings right. in the roadway to advise motorists right. to sort of right. stay on their side. Yep. Uh, and I, so that's, again, I'm not pitching necessarily these are the ones right. you should vote for. But right. I'd have to say, in terms of bicycle infrastructure, I do Better. like things right. like this. Okay. Uh, just to make the roadway itself right. a lot safer. So. All right. And then um, just if I can just on the under environment health and safety, there's quite a few good ones, but the Cambridge Prepared Food Rescue Freezer yeah. Van, I really like that because um, we do so much in this uh, city. Food for Free is such a wonderful, I don't know if they would be involved with this, but um, it doesn't seem to be a lot of money to accomplish a lot. They could pick up a lot more from Harvard, from MIT, from restaurants, and um, absolutely, yeah. And, and just so. having infrastructure uh, right. to basically pick up and right. store right. Uh, surplus food uh, yeah. is really a big, big part of the difficulty yeah. in making a yeah. system like this work. So that's great. So, so, um, so there are some good ideas yeah. here, and these are not the type of things that you would normally uh, have appear. So let's see. Oops. Let's go back yeah. to us now here. Oh yeah. Right. So these are not some some of these projects are kinds of things that you might see bubble up from mm -hmm. departments as part of their regular budgetary procedures. Mm -hmm. I think we believe there's one in there that has to do with uh, some kind of technological solutions which would help uh, maybe make bus traffic. If I'm not oh, mistaken here, yeah, right. something so work better along Mass Ave yeah, and others. Right. Um, 
it was a little strange because it doesn't sound like something that kind of bubbled up from the people right. so much as from the department. And they, so it sounds a little bit like they're doing... Could come from... Yeah, they're getting like a supplemental budget on yeah, top of their little, budget, which right. seems to be not really the in the spirit of things. one about the school and chairs. Yeah, yeah, and like, you know, so <laughs> participating would buy yeah. more chairs for the school. Well, right. isn't that why we have a school department right. budget, right? Hello. So, okay. Yeah, so some of it's a little odd. But I like the process, and right. again, just to, another topic we'll touch upon a little yeah. bit later tonight here is um, what I really like about the participatory budgeting, uh, and I wasn't sold immediately when they came up with this a mm -hmm. year or so ago, uh, was that it's an opportunity for people, including some people who are what I, we, I like to think of as sort of the naysayers, right. to get more involved in doing something that's fundamentally positive at its core, right? right? Getting people to... Uh, actively be civically engaged in making good things happen. I mean, people like yeah. us, right. we, we got started in doing things like recycling, right. getting recycling started in the city, yeah. and that was a fundamentally a positive... I was on the Women's Commission before that. Is that right? Yes. I think I did know that, yeah, actually. Yeah, many years. Okay. But, so there are people, in fact, a lot of the people who serve on city boards and commissions right. are the kind of people who, you know, salt of the earth people, who are just mm. being voluntary, you know, maybe not all, right? Right. You know, but, uh, but who are yeah. giving of their time and energy to make things happen. They're, they're not necessarily trying to block this, stop this, yeah. fight this. They want to be involved this. in the community they live in. Yeah, and they just and want to be citizens. that's what is really uh, important to me, and I think Cambridge really gives you that opportunity, so you should really take advantage of it, because you said there are some board vacancies? Or there are, already? Yeah, I think right now there's, uh, oh, there's two major ones that I, yeah. uh, one brand new one, yeah. and I'm spacing out on exactly which and they how are. How people find out? Just go to uh, the city You can go to the city page. website, they have it. I always promote it as well, both mm -hmm. in the Cambridge Civic right. Journal and the Cambridge right. Civic Journal Forum, because, right. you know, at my core, I just think that's really how you exercise yes. your citizenship, is yes. you, you participate in doing yes. constructive things in concert with your Instead city. Instead of just complaining, you can actually yeah, have a voice. Exactly. Which means something. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, to me, it's all about sort of positive engagement. Yeah. It's, and that's really what, in, what appeals to me about the participatory, participatory budget, budgeting, budgeting right. is that it is, it's at least a way right. for new people, but also right. some of the longtime people to right. uh, be involved in doing things in a much more positive right. sense. So, you know, I, I'm glad for it. Good. Uh, there's a few other things happening uh, this week. One thing was actually last night I couldn't make it, um, but I, I don't think it was much for me to see. There was uh, the city and the DCR purchased some railroad right of way up by Fresh Pond, huh. uh, and there's already the Watertown Greenway going into Watertown along the old railroad tracks, uh, the, the right of way, and now they want to link it together oh. up to uh, getting closer to where uh, Linear Park and things are up by closer so to the is, Minuteman. What does that mean? For bikes or? Uh, bikes and pedestrians. Okay. It's just basically an off-road, uh, you know, an off-road facility, mm -hmm. which again, as a cyclist, you, the roads are great. But yeah. the thing is, is that, you know, nice sometimes it's, something so yeah, it's yeah. nice to have an option. It's a great place where people walk their dogs and, and So you know. it wouldn't connect to the Minuteman? It would Not, be well, separate from that? You know, it sort of does and it sort of doesn't. Yeah. The thing is, is that uh, there is a bikeway that runs along the edge of Fresh Pond, right. which I believe will be moved a bit. Oh. But, you yeah. know, parallel, you know, right. they want to make, make a little bit more of a... The water department people, I think correctly, yeah. want to create a little bit more of a buffer between the uh, the reservoir Absolutely. and where people pass Especially right now. Especially everything going on and people yeah, talking. And people yeah. walking their dogs yeah. and whatever. So. There'll yeah. be some reconfiguration there, but okay. perhaps the more significant part is where the railroad tracks run right through the, uh, the wooded area mm -hmm. and continue on alongside the cemetery yeah. uh, on its Watertown. And then there comes a point, I forget exactly what street in Watertown, where it's already built. Huh. And it's great. Uh, so they, it's like a missing link. So now um, there's... That's good. So they met last week, last night. Last night. To lay out some of the latest thinking and latest proposals. You go to the city council meetings, don't you? <coughs> yeah, but there was no council oh, meeting. Was it? Uh, it was canceled for last night. So, oh. um, so I thought right. maybe I'd go there, but I yeah. fell asleep. Took a instead. night off, right. Yeah. <laughs> so I can do that. Right? Right. I'm entitled. You do a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, but... Ultimately, it's not, it's not that complicated. I think the only thing that's complicated is that there's some abutters of some streets who resent the idea that there should... Resent, this is strange to me. Yeah. They resent the idea that there should be a connection to get to the linear path yeah. from the side street because they think, ah, oh, people will come and park there oh. and then and they're going to use that to get into the path. I go, oh. so what? Yeah, really. I mean, seriously. 
There's, yeah. you know, there's so many places where people can get on right. that they're not believing. You know, Joe Blow, they're, they're not, not coming to your street. They might do it during the week anyway. Yeah. They might do it on a weekend. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. what? You say hello to yeah. them, you know? Right. Is it, would that kill you? Yeah. Right? <laughs> they're walking. They're walking, sort of. right. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not an issue. <laughs> All right, um, something that I won't be able to make uh, is this Thursday night, because I teach on Thursdays. Is oh, a, that's I, at the library, yes? Yeah, at the main library from 6.15 to 8.30 p.m. They'll be having uh, uh, the progress report on the Cambridge Climate Change right. Vulnerability Assessment. And I went to the first one. They had a, something, I guess it was, actually I don't remember where it was held, but I went to uh, uh, the, the first phase of this, Mm -hmm. um, and I was looking at the report that they are, you know, yeah. presenting on Thursday. And honestly, I didn't see a whole lot of change from the what they presented. Uh, it's you know, mainly about ago. storm surges, though. You know, some it? of it was about storm surges, but the conclusion they yeah. made is that, that in terms of things that are actual threats for a place yeah. like Cambridge, storm surges, at least from now till 2030 or beyond, that's not the biggest issue. Uh -huh. Some of the biggest issues are a vulnerability to um, major rain events which may become more frequent so if you're in an area like for example right. up around Alewife right. or as I'm looking down this way here toward yeah. area 4 which we is now we have yeah. to call the port right, right? so as right. I look down toward the port yeah. it might actually look like a port because yeah. it's level of, so it does have to do with water I guess that's what I meant yeah but it's not, so, it's not storm surges of, of ocean water no, coming but, up but rain water or how to deal with yeah sewers it's, and it's all that how stuff. to actually yeah. move that and I at right. the at the meeting they had the first one uh, there was attention correctly pointed toward pumping capacity in places like the Amelia Earhart Dam on the Mystic River uh, and the out at, at the Alway and getting water out the Mystic River so that rainwater can actually get huh. evacuated from the the wetland areas up around here along mm -hmm. Alwife Brook so that's a vulnerability that's identified and reiterated mm -hmm. in the latest report I think it's fair. Uh, another major point they emphasized in terms of vulnerability, because this is a vulnerability assessment, right. uh, was that we should expect much more frequent um, uh, heat waves. Uh, and there are public health implications associated right. with major heat waves that continue and continue and continue. Right. Right. One of the things that I found a little lacking in the report uh mm -hmm. they is this online this report yeah it's online and through i through what um or do you have that online or i think i do but um i guess it would be under community development yeah, yeah cambridge they, climate committee yeah, yeah and yeah. also the um john bulldock's department uh, um well that's all under community development it's all within right. the umbrella of community right. development so you can access it all through climate there. planning climate protection and action committee yeah i mean i i viewed this entire exercises uh, in many ways a, an opportunity mm -hmm. to look upon uh, look across the city about things that are mm -hmm. real vulnerabilities infrastructure that should be hardened like mm -hmm. for example what happened in New York after Hurricane, oh, Hurricane Sandy, Sandy is yeah. entire subway systems were inundated right actually over in Boston I would I don't know you remember the time when Kenmore Kenmore, station, Kenmore. it was up to you, the steps it was right up to the yeah. steps you could look, look down the station yeah. it was filled with water that wasn't hurricanes it was some other it was a overflowing event. of the muddy river exactly. which is something that happens yeah. and the, st the stupidity of what happened there mm -hmm. was that afterwards they realized that when the when the the tunnel for the green line was actually built going down to, from uh longwood avenue longwood yeah. stop down there were slots in the side of the tunnel to put in um boards to block water from going down into the tunnels and no people forgot oh you mean that would have done it yeah, well yeah boards? so so now when they have a major storm event what yeah. they they don't put in boards but they 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 sandbag the whole thing and they basically seal it up so that uh, overflows will, will not go in and destroy yeah. the infrastructure, which is wow. what happened. Yeah. You know, so that's what it really I think people need to understand in terms yeah. of vulnerability assessments. There's right. it's really important infrastructure, and you could just lose it. It's very expensive, mm -hmm. and it's inconvenient, and it's yep. just ridiculous to just give it up when you can avoid it. Uh, one of the things that I thought was a bit of a deficiency in, in this, and again, I wish I could go to um, the, the meeting on Thursday, mm -hmm. but I can't, um, they, then they talk about the electrical infrastructure that makes it sound as if, if there's a big storm it's going to take down the power plant. But you know, the, the 
personal experience in places like Mid Cambridge, mm -hmm. there's a lot of really aging electrical infrastructure in this city. Yes. And the NSTAR people, who are now the Eversource people, they'll be the first to admit it. Yeah. Uh, you know, so if you're going to have extended periods of heat waves, then you're going to have brownouts. You're going to have uh, uh, over. You're going to have uh, far excess um, uh, load mm -hmm. on uh, electrical infrastructure as well. And they, they seem to kind of brush that aside as kind of a non-issue. And I, I thought, well, I don't think that's really true. Mm -hmm. having, having had the, all the power, you know, more, like three separate failures yeah. right where I live. I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, you know, it's, it's aging. It I mean, yeah. the, the electrical power that was supplying my house was just right. a, a, a wire from the 1940s buried in yeah. dirt. Yeah. Not yeah, even no, in a conduit. Yeah. You know? So there are other parts of infrastructure mm -hmm. I think they do need to look Maybe at I'll here. Maybe I'll go to that. Yeah, I think it, it's an interesting thing, and it is. There is some interaction. I think is mm -hmm. some definitely some value in that. So, so that's Thursday at the library. Thursday at the main library. Six fifteen. Six fifteen. Uh, Thursday. So that's something that's uh, you know mm -hmm. potentially valuable. So anyway, um, maybe we we're going to perhaps spend a chunk of time on the second half hour right. and talk about what I like to call civic infrastructure. But mm -hmm. maybe this would be a good time to at least mention one thing in the political world yeah uh, which is that um, you know so the elections have taken place the um, uh, now I mean if you <laughs> if you go to a city council meeting you mm -hmm. can kind of or if you just go walking into a the SNS restaurant you might <laughs> see a couple of city councilors yeah. getting you know chatting each other up now because this is the this is the period historically oh, when they have to choose a mayor when you have to choose, well they choose a mayor uh, at the first, first. Uh, the inaugural meeting in January. So that's okay. 10 a.m. Uh, the first Monday of uh, the new year is when it takes place. Okay. Uh, so that's coming up in a month. Uh, but, you know, it, it's not like people don't think about who's going to be mayor until the January. They're obviously meeting and, you know, and people who are, you know, there. I don't think there are nine people. It's on my birthday. Trying to be mayor. January fourth is a Monday. Is that so is, is that fourth? It? It I think day. that's right. Yeah, I think right. that's exactly it right. Okay. That's my brother Rick's birthday too, by the way. Oh wow! See, there's there you go. Connection. All right. uh, so anyway, the uh, they're meeting and they're talking, uh, chatting each other up, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know. What's a scuttlebutt? What is the scuttlebutt? You know, I don't know. I, I think that there are some people who are highly improbable choices for mayor who are probably throwing their hat in the ring trying Nadine, to get it pro the, possibly yeah. but yeah. but he'll never get the votes yeah and but i think uh the prop in my view the sort of the leading contenders would be david marr probably trying to seek re-election hmm. denise simmons who was uh, the most who, popular overall i think we yeah by, that by at least at least several yeah. measures of popularity right. denise simmons comes in at the top of the heap mm -hmm. uh the um but you know just because you're popular doesn't necessarily mean you have the right a leg up on becoming mayor. Uh, mm -hmm. Leland wanted to be mayor two years ago. I don't know what his desires are this time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and by the way, some people make a lot of big deal about all these slates and stuff as, yeah. if, as if these are like different warring tribes, but... They're sort of now like yeah. to the wayside <laughs> I mean, you know, just for the election. The, the silliness yeah. of all that slate talk was ultimately that in yeah. the end, if you want to be mayor and you need five votes, you talk to people who are on your side, mm -hmm. and you talk to the people on the other side, because five is five. It, yeah. it, it doesn't matter where the five come from. Yeah. And so they were all chatting each other up, like crossing the lines, mm -hmm. who knows how it will go. But one of, the thing I, one of the things I did find interesting, um, you know, I was looking at the Cambridge Civic Journal Forum <coughs> today, uh, only because I think some other, they were getting a lot of hits on one page about an Wait, were you looking at who, what? I well, that was yours. it is mine. Oh. But the thing is, is that there was one page that I put up when they elected oh. the mayor two years ago. Oh, 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 and, I see. And, um, you know, some apparently people were looking at it today, and I looked oh. at it, and I had forgotten. You can tell who's looking at your stuff. I can't tell who's looking at it, but I can see how, how many, many people are getting. going. Okay. And I said, well, hmm. all right, this is interesting. Let me look how the mayoral vote went last time. And I had huh. forgotten that, in fact, oh, uh, right. Leland wanted it, and then David Marr had, Marr had five votes, right. but then... Then that went down, and people switched their votes here, and there was a lot yeah. of vote switching. Right. And at one point, Denise Simmons had five, then six votes on the table, and then some people changed their votes to bring it down to four. Uh, and on the third ballot, it went with David Marr had five votes, and then I think, forget who had the others, and they started switching votes again. And there came a point where it was five for Marr and four for Denise Simmons, I believe. 
How many do you need, though? You need five. Right. And so. Denise Simmons was recorded as voting for Mara at that point. She could have switched her vote oh. to put herself up to five. So she had never voted for herself. No, she had. But the oh. thing is, at this point, she felt, and I think probably correctly, oh, that I see what you're the, the she, whole she cycle vote. Of, yeah. of vote switches would have just commenced right. again. Right. So she said, enough. So she let it. She just she left the, the vote, vote on the, the table, it left it. David Marr became mayor, and I, you know, and I forgot about that. And I thought, well, you know, that was the better person there. The better person. So I said, you know, whoever, you know, again, I'm not shilling for anyone here, yeah. but I have to say, uh, to to leave that vote on the table yeah. when you could have made it five for you to become mayor, right, means, gives you a lot of moral authority, I yes. think, in terms of seeking to be mayor maybe, this time. Hopefully, people will hear that. Yeah. Well, you know, I think... Well, and, uh, and take that kind of uh, lead, you know, if they happen to be in that position. Yeah, maybe, absolutely. Know? But, yeah. you know, it's, it's funny. The, uh, there are a lot of reasons why a person might want to be mayor, you know, and some of it is this More ego. And some of it says they're More really staff. getting... Yeah, <laughs> some of it's that. And, you know, it's, you know, it's your pension ultimately is based yeah. on your highest two earning years yeah. or three yeah. earning years. Absolutely. So there's a lot of good reasons for doing so. Well, you have to like the schools. You certainly have to like the schools. You have to sit in a lot of schools. Right, stuff. and, you know, so David Marr yeah. and Denise Simmons have both served on the school committee. Good so, point. So they could certainly make a pretty strong yes. case. So anyway, we're down to okay. our last uh, right. 10 seconds of here. This so, segment. so we'll come back. We'll talk about civic infrastructure in a few minutes. So until okay. then, this has been Cambridge Inside. Out.